Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to download the Unreal Engine source code and how to compile it from scratch. So uh, there's several reasons you may want to do this, but the main one is uh, in order to allow you to build a server target. So um, some projects, so for example, if you're trying to integrate with uh, Playfab GSDK, it will actually tell you in the instructions that you'll need to download Unreal Engine source code and uh, work with the um, source code compiled engine. So uh, this is because further down the line, you'll need to create a server target build, and you can only do that through the Unreal Engine source code build. So that's uh, what we're going to be looking at. And uh, there's several steps. So this can take several hours, potentially more than a day for some people. Uh, so do bear that in mind. And you'll also need quite a lot of hard drive space available. So I think for the Unreal Engine source build, I think mine was about 200. We'll check at the end of the video as well. Um, but that's kind of the prerequisites you'll need. Okay, so the first thing that you'll want to do is get the access to the source code. So the source code lives on GitHub. And um, so you, you can see you'll need some pre, uh, prerequisites here. So you need to be an Un Unreal Engine subscriber, have a GitHub account, and associate the GitHub account with the Unreal Engine account. So all of these steps are documented in this link over here. So uh, this is about like how you can uh, sign up to GitHub, uh, open it up, um, and all of these steps are free. So you don't need to pay for anything here. This is really just linking your GitHub with your Epic Games account. Um, and then once you do that, you'll just have access to uh, the repository. So this is the uh, repository over here. So I'll go to Unreal Engine. You can see there's the little lock over here. So you can see it's a private repository. So that's why uh, you need to link those accounts in order to get access to it. So uh, once you get here, we'll be able to start downloading the source code. Okay, so with GitHub, you'll want to now download the source. So there's uh, several ways of doing that. If you have GitHub configured, so you've got SSH configured on your machine, uh, the most trivial way of doing it is just to copy this URL um, and simply do git clone and then you um, copy, uh, you paste the URL in. So uh, this will just go ahead and um, clone the entire repository for you. Uh, this, this repository will be quite large. Um, so if your internet is not very good like mine, um, I would actually suggest you uh, add um, shallow clone on here. So adding that equals one. Um, and this will only uh, effectively clone the surface of it. So it's not going to uh, clone the entire Git history. So it will basically clone just a, a shallow copy. So it won't copy everything in. So this will keep the network load a lot smaller for this iteration. Um, so that would be the first uh, way you can do this. Uh, alternatively, you can always just download as a zip here. Uh, but my personal preference is to actually just go into the release tags and uh, you can just select the release you're after and simply download one of these releases. And this is, um, again, a lot smaller than cloning the entire repository. Um, but it, it's, it's not going to be configured with Git. This is just simply uh, the code for that particular release. So uh, this is sufficient for the majority of cases. So that's why I went ahead and do that. So you can see I've already uh, downloaded this one. So that's the one that we'll use uh, throughout this video. Okay, so once you've downloaded the um, source code, so you can see uh, the source code itself is about 600 meg uh, in size as a zip. Uh, you'll want to just extract it. So you might need to um, install a, a different application in order to extract it because the extract tool might be too slow or just not very efficient. So I download, downloaded 7-zip, so I'll have a link for that in the description. Simply extract it and you'll have the Unreal Engine source code available here. So now we're ready to start installing some of the prerequisites um, before we can compile and start the project up. So in order to install the prerequisites, um, Unreal has made it actually quite simple now. So all we need to do is actually uh, run this setup batch file. So uh, if you're running on Windows, you'll need to execute this Windows batch file. Uh, if you're running on Mac or Linux, um, I'm pretty sure you'll need to run the setup, but I haven't uh, tested this on Mac or Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this setup file. So this will uh, check all the dependencies and then it will start downloading everything that it requires. So again, you can see it's uh, going to be downloading quite a lot of stuff. My internet sucks, so this will take me several hours to do this. So I'm just going to leave this uh, running in the background 
and I'll come back to it in a few hours or maybe tomorrow or something like that uh, and then we can continue it on um, yeah okay while this is updating dependencies what we can also do is uh, download and install Visual Studio so you'll want Visual Studio 2022 and the community edition is just fine so once you download this so you should get the Visual Studio installer and uh, you'll be prompted with a configuration screen when you're installing or potentially if you already have it installed you'll just want to click modify button to make sure that you have all the things you need for um, Unreal Engine compiling. So uh, what you'll want to do is um, on this workloads tab select the .NET desktop development uh, desktop development with C++ and also the game development with C++ as well. So there's one addition that I changed as well. I think it was part of the um, JSDK advice. So I selected a different version for the Windows 10 SDK. I'm not sure whether that is uh, required, but if you do want to copy exactly as I did, I just went into this um, individual components, typed Windows 10, and I selected this 10.0.20348 instead of uh, a more later version. So potentially it will work just fine with a later one as well. Um, so that's up to you. But this is the one that I've selected as per uh, some other documentation, uh, which could be potentially out of date now. Uh, right. So once you've got this configured, just simply start and install it. Um, the time it takes will really depend on your internet. I think for me, it took close to an hour, but it could be faster. Okay, so once this finishes, um, it will basically just a prompt for administrator privileges, and then it will close itself. So if you execute it from a command line interface, so the command prompt, um, it's not gonna close itself. So I'll just demonstrate that quickly. So you'll see I executed the setup batch file and uh, there it was asking for privileges. And then you can see it's just um, simply finishes. It, it doesn't tell you anything was successful or anything like that. It just will simply close itself and it's done. And then if you check uh, the file size of this folder, um, it will be about 59 gigabytes. So uh, it does quite a lot of downloading and quite a lot of installing uh, in order to get this source code ready for compiling. So now uh, we are ready to generate the project files. Okay, so in order to generate the project files, all we need to do is double click this uh, generate project files um, and it's a Windows batch file as well. So uh, it will be quite similar to the previous one. It'll just go ahead and do what it needs to do to create the Visual Studio files that we can then open and start compiling. Um, so this shouldn't take too long, but it will be maybe a couple of minutes, like two, three minutes. So um, I'm going to just pause the recording and wait for it to complete. Okay, so that took just over a minute to complete for me. Um, again, the batch file closed itself, so I just uh, executed it from the command prompt so you can see what kind of output that it uh, provided. Um, so you can see that it just uh, will finish with generating query targets data for editor, and then you'll be able to see that it created the solution file over here. So uh, if you've got the solution file created, um, that means it should be done. Um, it might be better to execute this from the command prompt just in case there are any errors and uh, you'll be able to double check them here as well. Okay, let's just open up the solution file and see what we have. So this could take a moment to load up the project. It's a quite large project. And bear in mind as well, if you do get a notification, I think it normally appears around the Solution Explore, uh, Explorer, uh, indicating that there might be some packages um, that require installing, just hit to install them as well. So uh, it does a pretty good job now of checking uh, the project and all the prerequisites. So it, it might find additional libraries that it will need to install and they will be safe to do so. I'm pretty sure I have to do that. Um, I'm not 100% sure which ones they were um, but yeah, so if it does prompt you to install any additional libraries, you can uh, click to install them here as well. Okay, now with the project open, we'll want to go ahead and select the development editor here, leave this on Win64, and then with the engine, we'll want to go ahead and click build. So uh, this building is going to take a while, so uh, I think I've got a pretty decent PC. Um, my internet sucks, but my PC should be okay. And uh, this will still take anywhere between one or two hours. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave this to compile now. Um, and I'll come back and we'll see how long that has taken. So um, yeah, this is going to take a while. So I'm going to pause right here. 
Okay, so within the first sort of uh, 30 seconds or so, um, it actually did fail. And um, I've got a bunch of warnings here, uh, which I believe are basically indicating that my uh, path is too long. So this should be a Windows specific error. And I suppose it's just telling me that this path for my source is too long. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten it. I think this is a pretty common problem. So I think it's worth just highlighting that this can happen quite often. I, I simply put the extracted folder into uh, the root directory slash UE fresh build. And already you can see it's caused some issues. So this probably can happen to anyone. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this path shorter now. Okay, so now I've made the path shorter. So you can see I've just got it I U refresh and then the 5.32 release. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. Uh, bear in mind, in order to change path, you may need to close your Epic Games launcher uh, because it might have it um, referencing the engine. So you might need to uh, close that in order to change the path. Um, and then once uh, you've changed the path, we're going to try and build this again. So all of these configurations should remain the same. So I'm just going to go right click um, and click build. And again, I'm just going to let it um, do its thing for a while. So I'll pause again and let's see how it goes. Okay, so as you can see, this took about uh, 48 minutes to compile for me. And um, I've got an AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, so it's a pretty powerful CPU. Um, so yeah, it could take a bit longer, I, I suspect, for some people. Um, really depends on your specs. And um, yeah, after the first warning, I did actually just click rebuild rather than build, uh, just to make sure that um, some of the warnings went away. So I think it cached some of the um, file paths. So I did just click rebuild instead of build again, uh, just to make sure everything was cleared. So that's how long it took. And I think it's now ready to start. Okay, so in order to start it, I think we just need to click debug and uh, start new instance. So this should go ahead and open up the engine for us. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at this go. Okay, so you can see it's uh, starting up for the first time now. So this again could take a bit of time. So I may potentially pause this again because I think it might be compiling some more things in the background. Um, so let me just take note of the time and I'll just um, pause it so that you don't watch a loading screen for a while and I'll let you know how long it took. Yeah, so you can see it's compiling uh, more than 5,000 shaders again. So yeah, I expect this will take a bit of time again. Okay, so that was actually relatively fast. It took six minutes for me to finish all that off. And uh, you can see it's just opened up so I can go ahead and uh, create something. So I'll just go ahead and create something really basic just so you can see that it is in fact working. Um, but like essentially we're, we're now finished. So that was um, from start to finish, how you can download the Unreal Engine source, how you can uh, get all the prerequisites downloaded and installed. Then you can compile the engine and now you can see we've started and it's um, creating a new fresh project. So there we have it. This is how you can get your Unreal Engine up and running from scratch. Okay, so that took another four or five minutes to go ahead and open up this uh, fresh project as well so uh, it just had to compile a lot of things for the first time but you'll be able to see that uh, once um, that opens up you can see it will work as expected so um, we've now confirmed that the Unreal Engine from Source has been successfully compiled and is working as expected um, a couple of other points of interest so let's see uh, the size of it so there's my folder right there uh, if I just check the properties, um, it's about 185 gigabytes, so just under 200 um, as kind of expected. So you can see it requires a lot of hard disk uh, space in order for you to go through this process. And uh, one other thing, so if you already have an existing project that you wanted to switch to this um, Unreal Engine from source, uh, you'll want to switch Unreal Engine version on your um, project file and then simply select uh, the new uh, path. So you can see uh, the Unreal Engines uh, installed through the launcher. They'll just have the version tag associated to them. And then if you've got the source build, you'll be able to also see the path 
of where it's installed. So uh, that's how you'll be able to switch the Unreal Engine uh, version on your existing project. So that's it for this one. Thanks and see you next time. Bye.